Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam ama ba'd Time and time again, ayyul ahbab We see that the Diobandis and the Jamaat al-Ahbash uh, The Ashaira And many of the groups who believe in seeking support and assistance from other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in fact, they try to justify going to the graves. Now, any thinking Muslim should listen and pay careful attention to their arguments and then try to determine and distinguish what is the difference between their arguments and the arguments of the Catholics who make repentance to their priest and who believe in a type of sanctity and sacredness and divinity of the saints. Ayul Ahbab, there are whole groups and sects of people in most of the Muslim countries, if not all, that participate in these kinds of acts of worship to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we know that all worship to other than Allah is false. And all worship to other than Allah is considered shirk. This is the origin and the what is inherent an inherent characteristic to shirk. By its very definition, it is associating partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Regardless of whether you're supplicating to that person or that animal or the sun or the moon or the stars or Jesus alayhi salatu wasalam or Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam all of it is considered shirk or if you seek intercession from the saints or from the graves or you offer fruit and vegetables or meat that you sacrifice to those graves, it is still considered shirk to Allah Azza wa Jal. And this was the same thing that the Mushrikeen of Quraysh, they did this. So Ayyul Ahbab run from those sects, and I'm telling you with all earnest, earnest, run from Jamaat al Ahbash as if you're running from the plague itself. As, as if you heard that a plague had befallen a village, do not enter that village. And likewise, do not enter into the sect of Jamaat al Ahbash. And likewise, run from the Diobandis because they negate many of the sifat of Allah Azza wa Jal. They change the meaning. And likewise, Ya Ikhwani Fillah, run from the Asha'ira because their arguments are all the same. And they have different levels of bid'ah. Some of them have bid'ah mukaffara, meaning the bid'ah that takes you out of the fold of Islam. And that depends upon the individual's belief. If they believe going to the graves is permissible to supplicate to them, and that those people in the grave can answer their dua, then this is shirk that takes you out of the fold of Islam. This is kufr al-akbar. And if they believe that what they're doing for example, they're making uh, tawaf around the graves and they're using it because they believe that this is going to bring them closer to Allah. Not believing that the person in the grave uh, should be worshipped or the person in the grave can help them necessarily, but for whatever ta'wil that they have, they're making tawaf around the grave. So perhaps in this situation, this might be a form, this is, is, is a form of bid'ah. And there are many different scenarios in which the people fall into. So beware of this. If anyone tells you that, hey, what we're doing is okay, that we're just seeking barakah from Sheikh so-and-so, then beware of this. Because the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa didn't seek barakah from the other prophets, alayhi salatu wa salam, and alayhim afdal salatu wa salam. Nor did the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'een make that as a practice to seek barakah from one another but barakah from the Prophet والسلام, especially during his lifetime was permissible Ayyul Ahbab this is incredibly incredibly sinister as a creed 
because it sneaks into the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is why the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasallam said, Let tittabi'oon as-sunan min kana qablukum. The Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasallam said, You would follow the Sunnah or the way of those nations that came before you. And when he was asked who they were, they said, uh, they, they said, Ya Rasulullah, Al-Yahud wa Nasara, Qala Faman. The Prophet ﷺ was asked, who are they? Is it the Jews and the Christians? And the Prophet ﷺ said, who else? And what is the sunnah of the Jews and the Christians? Is that they fell into shirk. Is that, لَمْ يَكُنِ الَّذِينَ كَفْرُوا مِنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ وَالْمُشْرِكِينَ فِي نَارِ جَهَنَّ مَخَالِدِينَ فِيهَا The Mushrikeen, from Ahl Kitab, they fell in, after the message became clear to them, they fell into shirk. And they changed the message. And the odd phenomenon is that all these nations went astray after the message became clear. So before the message, when the message was being revealed or uh, and so forth, they, they didn't go astray until after it was made clear to them. After their prophets, alayhim after salatu wasalam, were sent, then they went astray. That's when they began to commit shirk. After they had a messenger that had a clear message that explained the message of Tawheed to them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, في كتاب الكريم وَلَكَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةِ رَسُولٍ إِنْ نِعْبُدُ اللَّهُ وَاجْتَنِبُوا تَعْقُودِ We sent to every nation a messenger to worship Allah alone and avoid the Tawheed, avoid those things worship besides Allah. And we ask that Allah the Almighty accepts our good and forgives our evil and protects us from the evil of the Mushrikun and the evil of Ahl Bida wa Zambaka wa Ahl Zayg and the other people of innovation and the heretics who distort the religion of Islam from its pristine form, from the religion of Tawheed, the religion of Ikhlas. May Allah protect us from those people who distort that and commit shirk in ibadah, who commit shirk by seeking refuge in other than Allah, by commit, committing shirk, by making tawassal to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, seeking to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through other individuals that are dead. And may Allah protect us from those who tawakkal ala ghaylillah. And other than that, wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.